So last time we discussed why to read Sri and we discussed the importance of reading this book. <clears throat> it was described what is Vedas and what we understand from Vedic literature. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Vedas is Sarvel Ahame Vedyo, that uh, entire Vedic understanding is for so that we can understand Vasudev or Krishna in the end. So there are different meters and mantras, <coughs> samhitas. If they don't, don't direct a living entity towards the goal of his life to understand Krishna and to love him. So similarly, Upanishads are also <coughs> meant for this, this purpose. Mostly Paramatma realization uh, uh, people attain, uh, they read uh, Upanishads and all. And Shankarites have written a lot of commentaries about the 10 major Upanishads. So last time we discussed about this. <clears throat> Upa means near, Nishadati means to bring. So the Upanishads are the scriptures which bring a living entity closer to the realization of Supreme Lord in his heart. <clears throat> there are many Upanishads. Uh, we discussed how there are uh, ten, 11 major ones. Esha, Kena, Hatha, Prashna, Munda, Mundo, Payotitrihi, Aitreya, Chachando, Gyam, Brahad, Aranyakam, Tatha, and Shweta, Shatra, Upanishad. So these 11 are there. And most of the commentaries have been written on these 11. Otherwise, there are 108 uh, prominent uh, Upanishads. So Isha Upanishad is the first name which is mentioned in this. Madhvacharya has written... Uh, Shripad Majrachare has written commentaries on these 11 Upanishads. Baldev Vidya Bhushan has written commentaries on 10. But at right now, we have commentary available on one only. And we discussed how Isha Upanishad is a part of Yajur Veda. Yajur Veda, can, this uh, section of Yajur Veda contains 40 chapters. And this is the last chapter of, of Yajur Veda. <clears throat> there are 18 mantras describing about the Paramatma feature, Jiva, and the relationship between Jiva and Paramatma. So Vyasdevji has written uh, Bhagavatam Granth in the end uh, after realizing and after full maturity, after writing uh, Vedanta Sutra, Mahabharata, and other histories and Gayatri Mantra and Vedas. He, when Narad Muni came and chastised him, he wrote Bhagavatam, which is a natural commentary on Srimad, uh, which is a natural commentary on Vedanta Sutra. So last time we discussed how Baldev Vidya Bhushan was instrumental in establishing the parampara in Jaipur <clears throat> when Radha Govind Dev deities were installed in Jaipur. So he wrote commentaries on Vedanta Sutra, Gita and Upanishads. <coughs> Bhagavatam is worshipped as the crown jewel of all scriptures. So Upanishads, whenever they will talk about different uh, uh, philosophies, the Upanishad philosophy should not contradict with the conclusions of Bhagavatam. That has to be taken care of. And Acharyas uh, take care of this very nicely when they present Upanishads in a way that they don't uh, contradict the conclusions of Bhagavatam. So Srila Vyasdev has written this Bhagavatam Granth in the full maturity. And after understanding the entire thing, when Narad Muni empowered him to write Srimad Bhagavatam. So Upanishads also are describing the same features, but some people concoct them. So that's why. Vaishnava Acharyas have written commentaries on these Upanishads. <clears throat> so then we discussed how Prabhupada writes about four defects in living entities, Brahma, Pramad, Vipralipsa and Karana Patva. So these are mistakes, tendency to commit mistakes, inattention in our dealings and cheating propensity and the imperfect senses. Our senses are not perfect so that we can't realize the objects or philosophy or the personality who is beyond these conceptions of our limited senses. <clears throat> we discuss about three kinds of evidence, Pratyaksha, Anuman and Shabda. Shabda it becomes more uh, reliable when the it's coming from a perfect knowledge. When it's coming from a reliable source, the knowledge becomes perfect. So there are many people who preach in India about different things. And they sometimes concoct philosophy, make up philosophy, or many things they do to just run their business of spirituality. But we should understand whenever it's not connected to the proper authentic scripture written by Vyasdevji, 
they will not be able to sustain for a long time they will come and go till the time the person is influential in that uh, category of uh, philosophy and uh, whatever is there in our vedic understanding is called as vyasa uchishta means it's coming from vyasdev only so if a person is and that's why in uh, many of the temples uh, when a person is giving some lecture is made to sit on a vyasa asan so that's why everything is coming from vyasdev so if the person is rejecting the supreme authority of vyasdev then he can't sustain for long and he is committing a great blunder when he is rejecting vyasdev only he is a literary incarnation of supreme lord vyasdev is a literary incarnation of supreme lord he has been empowered to write many books <coughs> granthas about the glories of the supreme lord especially shrimad bhagavatam so then we covered last time the invocation prayers om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnam udachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnam eva avashishyate <coughs> lord is perfect and complete all emanations from him are also complete holes I mean all the universes which are coming are complete even though so many complete units are <coughs> emanating from him he remains the complete balance there is nothing minus getting subtracted from his personality everything remains intact even after so many universes and lot of other things are emanating from him he remains the perfect personality in complete <coughs> in its soul <coughs> then proper discusses about the sachidanand vigraha sat feature is called when a person realizes the eternity feature of the supreme lord he is brahman realized when a person realizes the sat and chit features eternity and he has knowledge of the uh, supreme lord situated in the heart and he is called as paramatma realized person <clears throat> then there is bhagwan realization which includes anand also and there are different reciprocations a person can do with the supreme lord in different rasas sakya dasya vatsalya other rasas <clears throat> so in this way anand the feature and the supreme embodiment of anand feature is shrimati radha rani who is a mahabhav uh, sarupani so in this way we discussed about that lord is having a complete whole and he is not form formless vigraha means form prabhupada writes so satchidananda vigraha bhagwan is satchidananda vigraha <coughs> then we discussed about the completeness of a human life can be realized only when one engages in the service of the complete whole there are many duties which we perform social political communal international and interplanetary systems so many duties a person performs <clears throat> but everything is dovetailed towards the supreme lord then the complete service uh, or the completeness of our personality also takes place till the time he is not connected to the supreme lord he will feel some vacuum in his heart and he will always feel there's something missing in my life till the time he doesn't get connected to the supreme lord in any way either service physically or mentally or in different ways he can perform devotional service and uh, due to prabhupada's mercy we have lot of uh, varieties of engagements available so that we can engage ourselves according to our proclivities so in this way a person when he dovetails his energies and he engages in the service of the supreme lord then the completeness of his own life will also be felt then we discuss about the first verse of uh, isha upanishad isha avasam idam sarvam yat kinchu jagatam jagat tena takte na bhunjita magrida kasya sicchanam <coughs> someone wants to recite this verse hare <coughs> krishna yes prabhu isha avasam idam sarvam isha avasam jagatam jagat सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ओनली एंड इज अ परफेक्ट कंट्रोलर एंड प्रोपराइटर ऑफ द एवरीथिंग विच इज देयर इन दिस यूनिवर्स वन शुड देयर फॉर एक्सेप्ट ओनली दो थिंग्स विच आर नेसेसरी फॉर हिमसेल्फ as bhagavatam says that we should uh, procure or we should have those things which are necessary which 
your needs for our self preservation not for self gratification don't uh, you procure and accumulate things which are meant for personal enjoyment but we should always aspire for self preservation that our body should be safe there is no harm in saving some things there is no harm in accumulating things but if we don't understand how to use them properly then they create a disaster in our life tena taktena bhunjita magrida kasya sridhanam which are set aside as a quota and one should not accept other things knowing well to whom they belong in one of the statements of uh, chanakya pandit he says that uh, one should paradareshu <coughs> lotsa and there is a verse in propad uh, also quotes that verse in many of the purports that how uh, one should see a gold even if the gold is present somewhere and if he if that gold is not belonging to you one should consider that gold equal to the stone only because it doesn't belong to you because you have not earned it with your uh, uh, like performing some activity you have not earned it so till the time you are not earning it earning some things and you're not uh, using those things for yourself uh, self uh, maintenance till that time those things will become burden on you because they will be unnecessarily accumulation in your life so in this way these things have to be it's it's not about the married life or something it's applicable to everyone whether grahastha brahmachari or anywhere or a sanyasi these principles are universal they are not meant for any like section of people they are universal principles so they apply to every <clears throat> varna or ashrama <clears throat> whether it's a brahmachari grahastha vanaprastha or sanyasi so we should accumulate those things only which are set aside as our quota we should not be so greedy or lusty about so many things to accumulate about then proper discusses in the purport about the para and apara shakti how para shakti are living entities are part of this tatastha shakti they can either either in the internal potency mode or in the mahamaya mode they are in the border so these things we discussed uh, last time don't be proud of being a vegetarian root of sin is deliberate disobedience to the laws of nature so disregarding the proprietorship of the lord when <coughs> still now we will start today's uh, second verse we'll try to cover two three verses today any questions or comments or we'll continue ुरुवा so what is this verse mentioning about if he continuously goes on working in that way which way which way is this verse talking about that one can live for hundreds of year if he continuously work in that way which way, which way uh, is mentioned in this verse which kind of work which kind of way this uh, verse is mentioning for that sort of work which sort of work the prescribed duty be- Hare Krishna, no. Prabhuji. From the first verse, that uh, we take yeah, only the things the which are granted for us. Yeah, in the Mandra way to... the first verse mentioning. Yes, understood. No, he should not be. Uh, he should not be greedy, and he should continue his work. In that mood, if no, actually, he. Actually, the second verse is actually a uh, continuity of the first verse. So, <coughs> as the first verse was telling. that uh, one should not accumulate things which are not meant for his quota so if a person keeps on working in that mode that he will not accumulate which is not meant for him so in that way he can live for hundreds of years also because that platform is actually a liberated platform it doesn't matter how many years you live but if a person is just uh, maintaining his body and engaging himself in uh, activities of the lord then he is actually a jeevanapi mritopisa 
that he is living but he is actually not he is uh, just in a body he is living he is liberated only actually such examples by prabhupada's grace we have so many examples like this although many time devotees are like when you whenever you meet devotees they look very normal people they are dedicated to the supreme lord <clears throat> but through the eyes of scripture if we understand because they are following these principles they are not uh, because i can see wherever i am living in community i can see so many people they don't have such cravings to accumulate or uh, they have dedicated so many way in so many ways they are grahasthas or they are brahmacharis or any people who is staying in our community so we see so many people who are living and other places also like propad has created the world so many temples wherever devotees are living and when they are following these principles all they they look in the <clears throat> in material terms they are looking very normal people but they are actually liberated souls because this concepts has to be understood and practiced <clears throat> and they are practicing those principles so from the eyes of scriptures we understand they are actually liberated people so here also isha parishad tells us <clears throat> that one may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working in the way which was mentioned in first verse for that sort of work will not bind him to the law of karma because he will not be so much greedy or accumulating for his self uh, <clears throat> enjoyment <clears throat> okay uh, can you uh, think of any other prayers like uh, Uh, i can remember uh, just it came into my mind that lord chaitanya also prays in his shikshashkam prayer that he wants to take birth again and again and to serve here so we understand through these prayers that how platform of liberation is not that merging into brahman or giving up this body then only you will be liberated you can take birth again and again you can live for hundreds of years but if the principles of these scriptures are followed then on these platforms also in this human bodies also you are actually liberated uh, living in a liberated state prabhupada writes <coughs> don't just drag have some purpose in your life <coughs> everyone is entangled in either karma akarma or vikarma and someone highlight what is this karma akarma and vikarma prabhupada is mentioning in the purport that there are three kinds of activities karma akarma and vikarma someone can guess what these three activities are hari krishna prabhu ji uh, karma means the sakam karma uh, or the person uh, or, or the or the work done in the satguna mm-hmm. the akarma is the karma which is done uh, for the uh, for the service of lord which does not have any uh, fruity reaction and vikarma is the person, uh, work which is uh, in uh, the uh, which is in uh, uh, opposed to the uh, karma is the prescribed duties vikarma is the prohibited duty prohibited actions which leads to sinful life vikarma means negative uh, negative uh, things which should one should uh, engagement in those activities will actually lead you to a liberated life so karma a karma or vikarma so everyone is liberate a personality so why it is mentioned that people are entangled in a karma <coughs> prabhu ji log uh, jo uh, when people are very frustrated doing vikarma so they temporarily wants ki we should you know for some day staying normal and neutral and that particular <coughs> point of time they uh, desires for this a karma again ki we want to get rid of all the sins so that's why indirectly we can say that they are uh, for some time they are involved in okarma yeah that's why it is in got the point <laughs> so yes many people do religious activity also which are mentioned in the scriptures they are meant for liberated platform but the motive behind performance of those activities is different 
<coughs> so that's why when religious activities are also done they become bound because they are in so they are keep moving in the circle of birth and death thank you <coughs> this verse shows how the learned person lives in his whole life performing daily and periodic duties while renouncing doership desires and the results of action so when these things are avoided when a person is living in this renounce kind of temperament doership desires and the results of actions are not desired so then a person is actually uh, while performing his periodic or performing his daily activities he will not be bound such a person is called as kovida a learned person perform actions with devotion and detachment sarva upadhi vinirmuktam tat paratrayana nirmalam rishikena rishikesha stevanam bhakti ruttama so you must have heard this verse earlier also the major themes of this verse is that one should be not attached to the upadhis he is given whether someone is working in a ceo or ceo of a company or because these skill set have been provided by the supreme lord and based on our skill set we are working in different ways so that we can sustain our livelihood and maintain our bodies ultimately to understand that we are all part and parcel of supreme lord so rishi kena rishi kesha sevanam bhakti uttama so bhakti uttama means highest bhakti is performed many people attach this word of bhakti with various other things also but bhakti means to serve rishikesh and when rishikesh or the supreme lord is served through our ishika ishika means senses so rishikena rishikesh sevanam bhakti ruchate so when the senses are engaged in the master of the in the service of the master of the senses then it is called bhakti uttama and giving up our uh, upadhis because as radhanath maharaj also many times he tells that after coming to devotional service our gross sense gratification stops to some extent to a lot of extent like bhagavatam also says nashta prayeshu abhadreshu so most of the abhadras are stopped but then the subtle abhadras or subtle things keep coming name fame and prestige so they come by different upadhis in our life so when we are attached to different upadhis in our life they actually bound us and they will not be actually helping us to serve rishikesh in full capacities so in this way when a person is not attached to his upadhi and he serves krishna through the engagement of his senses then he will be a very happy personality how one can execute god center activities is elaborately explained in the bhakti rasamrit sindhu by shila rup goswami <coughs> because uh, ishopanisha doesn't deal much with the describing about the activities which are centered around uh, supreme lord so bhakti rasamrit sindhu when we will be discussing there will be lot of topics which rup goswami has given which tell us how our different senses can be engaged in the service of the supreme lord and how there are different activities which will actually clarify many of the things why we perform in our scon standards also why prabhupad has given this why prabhupad has given that activity because many of those activities are given by shila rup goswami in bhakti rasamrit sindhu which are centered around krishna so those things will be discussed in that book power of god centered activities are नेहाभिकमनाशोस्ति प्रत्यवायो न विद्यते स्वल्पम अपि अस्य धर्मस्य त्रायते महतो भयात अ पर्सन इज सेव्ड फ्रॉम द ग्रेटेस्ट डेंजर इन हिज लाइफ इन समबडी गेस व्हाट इज द ग्रेटेस्ट डेंजर इन आवर लाइफ व्हाट इज द थिंग व्हिच एवरीवन इज अफ्रेड ऑफ जन्म मृत्यु जरा व्याधि डेथ आर यू अफ्रेड ऑफ योर बर्थ आर यू अफ्रेड ऑफ योर बर्थ नॉट राइट नाउ but what everyone who is living in the planet is afraid of death 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 so yes here a hint is given that highest thing which everyone is afraid of is death so because he knows what he what the kind of life he has lived 
so that is a fear in his heart that's why devotees are not so fear uh, fearful about the death factor in many places if you go and you start speaking about death also they will say why are you are speaking so much negative why are you are speaking about death and all it's so so much negative is there in that <coughs> topics <coughs> so most of the karmis and other people are afraid of death but this verse actually gives a hope for all of us and for all the karmis also if a little performance of bhakti or a little endeavor on this path of bhakti is done swalpam apyasya dharmasya a little endeavor done on this path actually can save one from the greatest dangers which is a death which everyone is afraid of So this verse comes in uh, Bhagavad Gita, second chapter. <coughs> Why this was mentioned? Because the theme of the verse is that one can live hundreds of years also if a person lives a life which is devoted to the Lord, then he can live for long time also. This verse, this is the theme of this verse. Then Prabhupada discusses about the rarity of the human life. Many Sorry, times sir. in uh, Prabhupada lecture, you... yes, Madhuri. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, Prabhu ji. Uh, you have mentioned in the previous shloka, "Swalpam apya asya." <clears throat> yeah. Uh, does it mean putra, uh, "patram pushpam palam doya"? Yeah, you can say it's the simplest okay. way to offer something to okay. Krishna. Thank you for that quote. Okay. Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada says there are eighty-four lakh species. Anybody has memorized this verse because uh, this verse actually gives uh, whenever you are speaking to someone or uh, like uh, telling about uh, philosophy of our Krishna consciousness, then if you want to describe how many species are there in each category, then this verse clearly says and very easy to remember also how many species are there in <coughs> each of the category. Anybody knows these categories? Okay, Jalaja Nava Lakshani, Sthavara Lakshvimshati, Kramya Rudra Sankhya Ka, Akshinam Dash Lakshanam, Trimshal Lakshani Pashva, Chatur Lakshani Manusha. So there are four lakh species of human life. There are thirty lakh species of beasts. There are ten lakh species of birds. <clears throat> there are eleven lakh species of insects and reptiles. Twenty lakh of trees and other plants. Sthavara means which are non-movable. They are fixed at one place. And jalaja, living living beings uh, in the water, are nine lakh species. Nava lakshani means nine lakh species. So total is eighty-four lakh. <coughs> which are the highest ones? How many? Uh, which uh, which category has the ma- maximum of these? Fish. Yeah, thirty lakh species in Trimshal Lakshani Pashava bees. That's why Pralad Maharaj says, whenever a person gets a human form of life, he will start. He should start his devotion service from the birth only. Pralad Maharaj started at a very young age. Udhav Ji started at a very young age. Guru Maharaj did in very young age. So if you see Narada from birth only, Kumaras never uh, grew in their size and bodies only. So many of these sages and all the <coughs> great souls, they have started performing their devotional service from birth only, and at least at least at the level of Kumara stage. ध्रुव मीन Dhruv means Dhruv means laksha, right? Okay. Anything else? Stability. Stability, Prabhu. Uh, stability. Stability. Yeah, very close. Forever, forever. So, yeah, forever. So Dhruv means which is not shaking up. It's stable somewhere. 
So a dhruva means opposite of that. Opposite of dhruva means a dhruva. So yes, human life is not stable. Anybody can die at any moment. So it is a dhruva. <clears throat> but second word tells arthadam. Although it is unstable, anybody can die at any moment, but it has a lot of importance in it. Till the time you are there in this human life, you have a great responsibility <coughs> and a great importance to this life because this is the only life in which a person can realize the Supreme Lord. So that's why Prahlad Maharaj says, from the beginning of birth only, one should start Komaram stage only. What? Dharman Bhagavataniha, not nothing else. The Dharma which leads to the Supreme Realization. <coughs> because it's very difficult to attain Durlabham Manusham Janma. It's very difficult to attain this human form of life. So this is described in the purport of Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> so many other paths, sometimes they say stop acting on different uh, platforms. Stop doing the activity only. But this is not the philosophy which we preach. We tell we don't stop the activities, engage them like you are doing devotional service. And this is being spoken by Krishna also in Bhagavad Gita. Yagyadanpa karma na tajyam karyam evatat. Yagyadanam tapas chaiva pavanani manishinam. So there are four things which have been mentioned, <coughs> or uh, three things. Yagyadana tapa karma. Yagya means sacrifice, dan means charity, tapa means austerity, and karma means activities. So what these four activities denote in our devotional service? What sacrifice we are doing? What kind of sacrifice we perform daily? We need to chant every day. Yeah, chanting is the Sankirtan Yagya is the everyday sacrifice for us. We don't uh, go to temples to do perform uh, all those ritualistic uh, karmic activity or karmic yagyas, but we perform Sankirtan Yagya every day. What is dan? We do. You know what? Uh, so knowledge. Krishna consciousness. Knowledge. Okay. Giving, yeah, giving we knowledge give to others. Yeah, bhakti dan. And various other things also which accompany bhakti. Like giving books to people and all other activities which are connected. Offering prasad. Like NOI also we discussed. Dadati Pratigranati. So giving and receiving. <clears throat> Tapa, Thank what is Tapa? Yeah. What is Tapa? Ekadashi. Ekadashi. Today is Ekadashi, so it is Tapa. Giving physical services for the Lord. Okay. Anything, anything deeper than this? <coughs> Actually, Prabhupada gives a definition of Tapa in Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada says there that any voluntary activity which is done for the pleasure of pleasing Supreme Lord is actually a tapa. So ikadashi and all these things, sometimes they are not voluntary. We make many other items which are not cooked on other days. So that doesn't lead to real tapa, but at least we are following a principle of not eating any grains on that day. That is okay. <clears throat> but... Prabhupada gives a definition, whenever a person does some voluntary activity which is meant for pleasing the devotees and the Supreme Lord, that is called as tapa. And other things you can say, uh, where the major voluntary activities or giving up things are, but the major penance are the four regulatory principles. <coughs> so when we follow these four regulatory principles, that is actually tapa for a devotion life. What are karma? Different activities which are performed for pleasing Krishna. <coughs> so, Natyajam Karya Mevatat. One should not give up these activities because these kind of activities which are done in devotional service, they even purify the great souls. So, that's why you will see many of the great souls also are engaged in devotional service and they don't give up these activities even after reaching a very high platform also. Because they, they know this uh, verse from Bhagavad Gita that one, a great soul should not give up uh, even after reaching to a certain level. You should not give up these four activities. 
they even purify the existence of a great soul pavanani manishina manishane manishina means the great learned souls <clears throat> okay we have completed second verse now the third verse we are taking up asurya nam te loka andhena tam savrata tam ste pritya vigachanti yeke chatma hano jana <clears throat> so in the first verse it was mentioned how a one person should live second verse was stating if a person lives in the accordance with the first verse he can live for many lifetimes also and hundred of years also but if a person doesn't follow then he is called as the killer of the soul <clears throat> because a human life is very rare so the killer of the soul whoever he may be must enter into the planets known as the worlds of the faithless and full of darkness and ignorance those planets are called as asurya nama te loka they are asuric planets <coughs> they are full of Hare full Krishna of darkness Prabhu? yeah prabhu ji yeah, the idhar jo shuru mein mera one thing strike to my mind actually soul is not uh, be killed or maybe destructible so how this killer of this soul means what exactly soul is never killed soul is never cut to pieces that bhagavad gita speaks about in second chapter killer of the soul yeah. means so, when a person is deprived of his real goal then people sometimes uh, they say na you are killing me what does it mean you are killing me is he stabbing him or what what does he doing because he is uh, hurting him or he is hurting the purpose of his life so in this way this term is also used killer of the soul means the purpose of the existence of the soul is killed okay okay so so those kind of people who are actually not fulfilling the purpose of the uh, existence of the soul they are actually going to the asuric planets with the conditioned nature of their faithlessness and full of darkness means the are these planets full of darkness what does it mean by full of darkness is there a complete uh, no light there or what what it is does it mean by full of darkness what is darkness puna there is no light or uh, surya dev that they are in complete darkness these asura lokas knowledge no, they don't have uh, knowledge. knowledge yes there is no knowledge about the supreme lord so when there is no <clears throat> knowledge about the supreme lord that is complete darkness so when uh, as uh, many other scriptures and uh, very famous in india also tamasoma jyotirgamya that verse is there that one should uplift himself from the darkness to the light so that means one should become knowledgeable in life <coughs> rupa tells that one should live a life of responsibility human life is distinguished from animal life due to his its heavy responsibilities heavy responsibilities maha dukhe ka hetatve prapyatya asure statha asurya namate loka tan yanti vimukha haro those who are who are vimukha they have turned their face away from devotional activities from the supreme lord and his devotees those who have turned their face away they are actually <coughs> going to these planets which are called as asurya planets <coughs> so these planets are called asurya because they give great suffering and because they are attained by the asuras so there are two kind of people one are devatas and second ones are asuras so those who are devata they are called as vishnu bhakta vishnu bhakta uh, smare deva asuras tat vipareya <clears throat> so those who are away from krishna consciousness they are having a asuric mentality although they were very dressed up in very nice coat and uh, tie and very nice suit boot and very jewelry and all but they are having a consciousness of asura asura is a person who is just having a vimukh from hari who is not facing towards hari who is not facing towards the supreme lord so they are opposed to the activities of the supreme lord so they go to these planets 
just imagine lord has provided for them also a place where they are they have rejected their father but still a lord has provided where they can enjoy and be in separation of krishna always nehayat karma dharmaya na vairagyay kalpate anyone whose work is not meant to elevate to a religious life na iha yat karma dharmaya the person who is engaged in his prescribed duties if those prescribed duties are not resulting his life into a religious thing if he is not gaining any consciousness of the supreme lord then those dharma those activities are not actually uh, elevating him they are just bounding him in this world only and anyone who is religious stick religious uh, ritualistic performance do not raise him to a renunciation na ve ragya e kalpate so first thing is mentioned about the karmas if karmas are not leading to the dharma then those karmas can be rejected if the dharma is not leading to a vairagya and vairagya what does vairagya means wearing this cloth uh renunciation means doesn't mean just wearing a saffron cloth but to have a renounced temperament it is mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam on uh, third canto when vidura ji was rejected <clears throat> he was a mantri in uh, that king uh, he was serving there in the dhritarashtra area and uh, he was serving under dhritarashtra and he was giving guidance to dhritarashtra but he was rejected by his son duryodhana and he was kicked out of the kingdom so the prabhupada writes that a devotee should always remain in a renounced temperament that there can be any time any moment when we will be kicked out of this world or some job or some like relationships so many things are there so one should not be that time doesn't become depressed that why i have been deprived of some uh, things in my life one should think that this is a good opportunity to take shelter of the supreme lord as prabhupada mentioned, many times did in his personal life also he was rejected discouraged and so many times <clears throat> disheartened but still he continued his services <clears throat> so karma should lead to dharma and dharma should lead to renunciation renunciation means a uh, consciousness of being surrendered to the supreme lord and anyone situated in this renunciation even if that platform is there <coughs> if it doesn't lead to the devotion service of the supreme lord na teertha pad sevaya jeevan api mrito pisaha his his uh, this personality is living but he is uh, considered as dead because just this flesh is there and consciousness is not awakened so that's why this personality although living is called as dead because he is not engaged in the devotion service na teertha pad sevaya jeevan api mrito pisaha <clears throat> and after engagement on such a path of devotional service there is no loss there is no nothing we can lose on this path we will only gain bhagavad gita says prapte punya kritam lokan ushitta shashvati sama suchi nam shrimatam gehe yogo brashta bijayate which are the two places where a yogi who has not able to complete his devotional life will reach which are these two places mentioned in this verse suchi naam and shrimatam what does it mean anyone knows one is higher. what are two places one is higher planet yeah higher planets okay <clears throat> anyone else the, the family of devotees okay the devotees okay anything else <coughs> सो प्राप्य पुण्य कृताम लोकान उशित्वा शाश्वती सम सूची नाम सूची नाम मींस अ फैमिली ऑफ अ ब्राह्मण और अ वैष्णव सो वन विल टेक बर्थ इन द फैमिली ऑफ अ ब्राह्मण और अ वैष्णव इवन दो इन हिज प्रीवियस लाइफ ही इज नॉट बीन एबल टू कंप्लीट हिज डिवोशनल सर्विस फुली सो ही विल अगेन गेट अ चांस सो दैट्स व्हाई देयर इज नो लॉस ऑन दिस पाथ विल गेट अ चांस टू टेक बर्थ in a family of a brahmana or a vaishnava or second uh, second uh, category is shrimatam in the family of aristocratic uh, uh, people who have lot of riches 
because he will not be able to worry about his uh, self maintenance he will be provided with lot of luxury so that's why he will he has a chance to focus on uh, other things of life which is important for the soul so that's why these two categories are there but most of the time we have also seen that those who have lot of riches uh, it takes a lot of endeavor for them to take to krishna consciousness or or uh, they sometimes indulge in <coughs> various other activities also which are not prescribed in shastras shuchi nam also many people who take birth in the brahmana family they have also got a chance <coughs> to further their uh, life of self realization but sometime even after taking birth in a brahmana family they are not able to even follow the prescribed rules of uh, four regular principles and all so but chances are given by the supreme lord in this way that uh, a person will get a atmosphere like a person who is born in the family of a medical practitioners so some of the basics of the medical practitioners he will al- already know before going to the college also The word Suchi indicates a spiritually advanced Brahmana. Shri Mat indicates a Vaishya or a member of the Marshital community. Bhagavatam also says, "Bhakta swadharmam charanam bhujam hare bhajan apakko atha pate tato adi yatra kwa abhadram abhud amusyekim kovartha apto abhajatam swadharmata." There are two words which have been mentioned in this verse. Abhajatam, and the second line says, "Bhajan apakko." so one category is bhajan apakko means a person who is not completed his quota of devotional service that means if a 100 person is required he has completed only 70% so <clears throat> from the 70% he falls down atha patet so this is one category a person who has followed 70% the devotional life but then he falls down second category is abhajatam he has not started his devotional service only but his performance of his uh, like uh, daily uh, taking care of the family and uh, taking care of his job and those activities he is doing very nicely but on the path of devotion he has not endeavored only so one category is a person who falls down after performance of some activity of devotion but other one he has performance of his other activities are very nice but not on the path of <coughs> uh, supreme lord so these two categories are there so the person who falls down from 70% he is no loss he is having no loss because in the next life he is guaranteed as per the uh, like shloka above he is guaranteed that he will be getting a very nice birth in the family of a brahman or a great vaishnava and in second category he will be circling around in the cycle of birth and death because he has not started his devotional service only and based on his karmas he will be given some enjoyment activities either in the heaven or if sinful activities in the lower planets <clears throat> okay this is the four, uh, fourth verse any questions or comments till now or is it okay if we end now or shall we take up the fourth verse also no comments no questions okay let's take the fourth verse also anijadekam manaso javiyo nanya deva apnuvan purvam ashrat tad dhavato anyan ateyeti tishthat tasmin apo matarishveva dadati so first three verses were actually described about the jiva now the fourth verse is actually describing about the lord as parmatma although fixed in his abode the personality of godhead <coughs> is swifter than the mind and can overcome all others running the powerful demigods cannot approach him although in one place he controls those who supply the air rain he surpasses all in excellence <coughs> so there are many gods brahma and uh, vayu and indra chandra and surya so many gods are there who are the controller of different different uh, like areas somewhere someone is controlling air rain and clouds and so many things 
<coughs> although they are at different places, but although the Lord is fixed in his abode, but he is more swifter than the mind and nobody can catch him. He can reach any place at any moment and uh, everywhere he is present. As uh, Bhagavad Gita also says, he is situated everywhere. The powerful demigods cannot approach him. As the first verse of Bhagavatam also says, Muyyanti yat suraya Tejo vadimidam <coughs> it is mentioned in Bhagavatam first word that even the demigods they can't approach and they sometimes become bewildered. Then many stories in Bhagavatam also when they got bewildered by the activities of the Supreme Lord. Even Udhavji also prays in the third canto that he is bewildered by the activities, but Udhavji is bewildered by the Yogamaya potency, not the Mahamaya potency. He is bewildered how Supreme Lord becomes a child of Mother Yashoda and is bound by the ropes of uh, Mother Yashoda. So such activities the Supreme Lord performs which bewilders even the great personality who are the controllers of this entire universe. So different controllers have a lot of capacities and they are there because one time they perform devotional service and second time they had some personal desire. So that's why they become Devatas. So when such personalities are there, they have power given and gifted by Supreme Lord only. Those powers are given to them by Supreme Lord. But sometimes they become bewildered because of this powers they have and the lot of enjoyment facilities they have in Swarga and other places. So that's why they are not able to fully understand Supreme Lord. Here it is mentioned, <coughs> although the Supreme Lord is at one place, but he controls all these other gods and he supplies them power so that they can also provide air, rain, surya, and uh, sunlight, and so many things they provide different, different uh, so gods of different, different uh, departments. So Brahma Samhita describes Panthasu Koti Shatavatsara Sampragamyo Vayuratha Pimanaso Munipungavana. So appears to yet prop the simmi as which it that way go win the Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami Panthas to Koti Koti means thousands of years. A person may endeavor meditating in different uh, postures and tries to approach, but he can only understand the tip of a toe of the lotus feet of the Lord. The yogis who are trying to capture, <coughs> and these yogis are Muni Pungavana, greatest of the yogis. They're trying to capture the Supreme Lord in their heart. They can even, uh, like their mind are more, uh, more uh, faster than the Vayu. They can reach to a certain uh, place of, with the power of their mind. But still they cannot approach the Supreme Lord fully. They can approach till the point here it is mentioned about tip of the toe of the Supreme Lord. That means they can't approach very closer to the Lord. Just uh, some uh, effulgence of the uh, Supreme Lord is enough for them. So such a <coughs> personality is the Supreme Lord. And also those who are aspiring for Brahman also. Those jnanis and yogis, they cannot approach the Lord fully. Brahmaji describes this in Brahma Samhita. <coughs> And Brahma Simita also describes about the Supreme Lord's abode also, where Supreme Lord lives. Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavitavis Tabhirya Eva Nijarupa Taya Kalabi Goloka Eva Nivasati Where the Supreme Lord is situated? Goloka Vrindavan. Akhilatma Bhuto. He is situated in everyone's heart also and personally in his abode he is situated in Goloka. And that place is called as Ananda Chinmaya Rasa. That is full of the beautiful spiritual personalities and the potency is uh, their internal potency is working everywhere. Chit Shakti of the Supreme Lord is working everywhere and uh, there, are, there are different rasas which are exchanged between different personality. So in this way, these people are living there and in this way, the Supreme Lord abode is described. 
then also it is described about in bhagavad gita 10th chapter name vidu suragana prabhavam na maharshaya aham adir hi devana maharshi naam cha sarvasa neither the host of demigods nor the great sages know my origin or opulences for in every respect i am the source of the demigods and the sages so this verse is actually describe the theme of this ishopanishad verse that how even great sages and yogis they can't approach with their power of mind and the ojas they can't approach the supreme lord fully they can't understand the uh the opulences and the origin of the supreme lord so bhagavad gita also tells that how the great sages cannot approach the host of the demigods they can't uh, reach to this uh, uh, this conclusions so that's why many stories are there in bhagavatam also how these personalities got bewildered and they understood krishna as a small boy only and they tried to test on krishna and they failed and they in the end gods uh, came and surrendered to the supreme lord so in this way we have covered till fourth verse we'll take up the fifth verse next time if somebody has some questions or comments they we can take up now are krishna ji i just want to can you please tell me in a brief about exams yes question is there yeah probably i was just saying that can you please brief us about uh, exam because last time the internet was not stable yeah. so <coughs> so i will just uh, 